Hello there, everybody. It's the Dankasaur here, and welcome to the first episode of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, this is the new Star Wars Battlefront that's just, uh, that's just come out. Uh, as you can see, the graphics, of course, are a lot more, uh... Are a lot more immersive and a lot more advanced than the ones in the first game in the first Battlefront. Uh, so, and they have a lot more classes, a lot more versatility. So I'm gonna go with the the Rebel Smuggler. Now I don't have a lot of experience with the game because, like I said, it's just it's just come out, it's just new. But of course, with any new game, like there's a bit of a learning curve. So I think I'm okay. Like I think I'm doing good. But. Uh, of course, I've only played a little bit of the game because it's just come out. So, I do want to mention a few things. Is that what's really nice about uh, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 is as you can see, I'm actually just playing bots right now. It's cool because they've added in, like, bots so you don't always just have to play online. Because to me, that was always a huge issue uh, with the first Battlefront. Not only that, uh, but, uh, as you can see, now you can play heroes, like, on your own. I don't like to play the heroes. I feel like it imbalances the game. I feel like it's not fun to win with a hero. That's just me, though. Although a lot of people were, yeah, they were complaining with the first Battlefront, how there was just no heroes. And then, like, the modes that did have heroes, like, it wasn't open to anybody. Like, uh, you just had to, like, collect a token or something. See, for me, when uh, EA released the first uh, Battlefront, on Origin, and I bought it like a scrub. I, uh, I I didn't play it for very long before I realized that I uh, that I hated the game, and so uh, yeah, that's why I haven't really explored it. So I don't know exactly how a lot of the how a lot of things work in the first Battlefront. However, from what I've been playing, I decided to give the second Battlefront a chance, just because I've heard a lot about it. So until, so like, so for right now, um, I just want to tell you more about what I like about it, um, more of the improvements and everything like that. I do want to mention how everything just feels a lot more immersive, a lot more Star Wars, the noises, the visuals, the gameplay, the weapons, the classes, feels a lot more Star Wars. What's cool is that they've, and this may sound a little weird, but I, they got rid of like, like the the women in, in the Empire for me it was always weird in uh, Star Wars Battlefront 1 how you could customize yourself like like as a woman not like there's anything wrong with that that's just the Empire was mostly you know was mostly made up of clones and so it was odd for me for when they uh, put it back in because I don't remember ever seeing any women stormtroopers in the original trilogy so for me that's that's something that I'm really glad that they kind of went back to to keep it more original to Star Wars. Not not really giving in to the new Disney franchise. Um, what's also really nice is that they haven't included anything from Star Wars uh, 7 and the upcoming 8. Um, holy cow. Uh, we're down to four people. Uh, we lost. And that's okay. Because the game is still... Uh, the game is still, like, uh, needing some balance. You know, there's, it's got some balance issues. It's got some, uh, things like that. But that's okay. Uh, hopefully they'll be releasing patches and stuff to, uh, accommodate for that. To make this a little bit better. So, also, I do want to mention, it's really great how they've re-put in the droids versus the clones. Because to me, I know this might seem, like, sacrilegious to most Star Wars fans, but, um... My favorite war is honestly the Clone Wars. So the fact that they put this back into the game is really it was really a big selling point for me. Just because uh you know, just because it was my favorite. I really like playing the droids, I really like the clones. I just really like the whole thing. Some people, you know, some people who are like true Star Wars fans or they like to call themselves true Star Wars fans only watch the original trilogy. I don't think that's quite right. Because I feel like it's okay. Um, I feel like the original trill. I feel like the prequels could have been done better. I will not deny that. However, I do like to make the argument that at least they're canon. They at least they're canon with the the George Lucas universe, shall we say? 
and not the garbage that uh, Disney produces from it, the franchise. So, I would just like to mention that. So, the fact that clones and droids are in here, showing that uh, that EA, you know, it's mostly uh, mostly wanting to get themselves back into the original Star Wars, not really giving in to what Disney wants them to do. They're mostly wanting doing what the fans want them to do. And that, to me, is a lot more important. I feel like that's showing a lot of growth, because EA, of course, is known for being a rather heartless, money-sucking, money, uh, you know, company. Which, I mean, I suppose it's still true. But, I don't know, for, for me, it seems like Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a bit of a huge hit. Something I do want to mention, however, is the lack of DLC. Um, is the fact that there actually is no DLC in uh, this Star Wars Battlefront 2. Everything is just right out of the box. Um, free, you know, just free. You buy the game for pretty cheap also. Usually titles like this are like, you know, $60. And then plus DLC makes it like at least $100 that you're paying for a game. But this game, uh, I believe it's on Steam right now. It's like $20 and that's its full price. Like that's just what it's going to be. And to me that's so impressive because that, that shows that at least for this game, EA is heading in the right direction. That they're that you know they're really just wanting to make a genuine Star Wars game, for the sake of making just a great game, rather than trying to you know use the DLC to suck everyone's money out. So what does this mean, as far as the future for the gaming industry? Well, let's think about this. Um, it seems like because EA being the kind of big company it is, they're kind of cutting back and 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 doing more, doing more in what's important rather than just working on pretty visuals or doing what they can to make, uh, you know, people buy their DLC. So I honestly think uh, EA right now is probably the, the best video game uh, company right now just because, you know, and they've had their stumbles in the past. They've had their problems. But right now, I think they're at the top of their game. I think they're doing everything right, nothing wrong. Especially with this new title. I mean, this is really just just really Just opening the way to a new aura of of Honestly gaming as a whole. I think this is taking a huge new step Now I want to take also a look that there's stats now uh, That like these career stats there's like awards there's something to work for there's something you could do on your own in single player um and it's something that shows like really, really where you're best at. See, I'm best with the the regulator, which means I'm best with the, the engineer as I keep playing, uh, of course. And so I thought was I think this is a huge step because then players actually have to really they have to really earn, you know, the rewards because before there were certain rewards and stuff that were just DLC, so people would just play, I mean to pay to be better at the game. And I think that's for me. Especially as like a as a bit of a budding indie game developer, I think that's a huge mistake. I feel like that was horrible. I feel like when players in the game should never have to pay real money in order to be better at the game. I feel like that should be something that should be taken with time and uh, you know just real skill, talent, uh, things like that. I think that's what's really important when it comes to a game. So what's really nice is that, like I said, there is no DLC, there is no microtransactions. Everything's just right here. The online play is super fun. It's really balanced. Um, unlike what it was before. Everyone gets the chance to be a Jedi. Everyone gets their chance to play what they want. Everybody's got kind of the same weapons. Unless, of course, you go through all of the... All the PvE to earn a bunch of rewards to get some nicer weapons. But these nicer weapons... I want to stress this, that these nicer weapons don't really make you super powerful. That they are, because right now I'm using an award shotgun, which is considerably more powerful than the regular shotgun. But there was a lot I had to do to earn it. So I feel like it's completely fair and balanced. A great move on EA. Really rewards players for working hard and making effort to accomplish something more and to do something else in, in, in the game. I'm, so, I do also, I've talked about it a bit more, but I want to talk about it again. How just super proud I am of EA, just for making this enormous step 
enormous, wonderful step when in the gaming industry. Um, it, it's really cutting. It's really going back to, to the to the roots of gaming, like back back in the old days. Like you, of course, we all remember when the original Star Wars Battlefront one and two came out, and how magical those were, you know, and how just incredible. They're fun. Uh, people still play them today, of course, because it really was a really, just really good title, an amazing bit of. Uh, Gameplay, and that's that's what I'm really seeing from this new Star Wars Battlefront 2. As you can you can even tell on the gameplay I have right now on the screen, is that it really is just something that uh, really is coming back to those original roots. You know, those original Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 um, roots. Um, the, but the exciting thing is that they're kind of pulling in that same gameplay, but with new next-gen graphics. I mean, you can tell just how realistic these bullets look, how realistic that death was, in fact. And like the Dardika animations and everything, really amazing. And and not only that, but look at that. Like, this is just looks exactly like Samuel L. Jackson. It's incredible to me that this is just computer, you know, computer animation and whatnot. This is just amazing, to be honest. I don't like to play the Jedi though, as I've stated before. But it's really, it's just incredible to see, to see them implement this new technology into the old, more superior ways of gaming. And uh, to really just create a masterpiece. In fact, like I was kind of, I was on the fence about it, but now I'm actually pretty sure that yeah, I'm I'm willing to say that this Star Wars, the, the new Star Wars Battlefront 2, is a complete masterpiece. Like, okay, I died pretty quick right there. Some people might call, you know, some unbalance and things like that, but I, it's not, it's not unbalanced. Like, I completely just didn't, I wasn't in the right spot. I wasn't very smart about my movements. Uh, I stood right in front of him. Um. So it's completely fair that he was able to just kill me really quickly. And so that's one of the most important parts, is just the balance. Just the balance. It's a huge part. It seems to be that they put a lot of like budget into playtesting and into the balance of the game. Which shows a lot of heart, a lot of progress, um, a lot of smart business and game design uh, when making a move like this. Pretty amazing. Uh-oh. All right, that was fine. That was uh, that was our own uh, detonator. So right now games can go pretty fast. Like if people aren't on the ball, right now these are the bots. So of course they can't stop. They can't stop what I'm putting down. But all right, so they stopped what I was putting down for just a little bit there. But there's no crazy respawn timers, um, and whatnot. Oh, I didn't even mention that this was a huge part. That uh, they've actually brought command posts back. Like I mentioned a bunch of stuff about how they were putting things from the old games back into the back into the new one and command post is, is one of those and this is amazing to me because the command post like that was such a such a such a really good part of the original Star Wars Battlefront just because I mean just for the strategic value but then not only that but like it gives you a bit of an option I prefer winning by murdering everyone on their team um, that's because that's the way I'm choosing to play and that's the way that I'm going to play to make the best of it. Um, but then, if I wanted to, though, be more strategic and like more stealthy, and go around and collect command posts, I have the option to do that. Like, there's a lot of more like gameplay options. Um, as far as like what uh, what you can do and how to win. So. That's another important huge part is the command post, and you'll see just how accurately that they got the the old command post, uh, work like the whole the old command post mechanics in this in the new game, um, because you can just see that the respawning, choosing classes, everything it's just still there, like it's back, it's back there. Uh, there's a Bothan around here, uh, Bothans are back. I do want to mention that as well. So people who actually want to do more of that stealth. Infiltrator gameplay. They now have that option. That wasn't an option before. It was always just get a get a big gun and then like shoot some guys, and that was the game. Like that was everything. Now um, he shot me in the face. That's fine because I shot you know more than a few people in the face as well. Um, let's make sure this this uh, this doesn't get taken. All right. So now they're coming in. Ooh, we got to take care of that huge part. Those recon droids. They're pretty powerful in the new game. Uh, they weren't so much in Battlefront 2. 
you can take them out pretty easily. But now, um, like those those drones, like those recon drones are really powerful now. So something you gotta watch for. Um, I just also want to mention that thermal detonators are like standard now. Ah, see, that's another example of the Bach and spies doing what they do. I'm just all over the map. So if we talk about Bothans real quick, uh, we can talk about how Bothans are a really rewarding class. And how it rewards you for playing smart and thinking before you go. And not just like running and gunning. You really gotta, you know, you really gotta think about what you're doing and really gotta consider what your team needs you to do. If you need to sneak and get command posts or if you need to sneak and, uh, you know, take out important targets, you have those options. So what, what I'm really liking is that it's bringing back classes so that it's not about who has the best gun and who has the more, you know, the ones that they paid the most DLC for and upgrades and things like that. It's whoever, it's whoever truly picks a good class on purpose and then uses that class to best make a, like a purpose. So I hope that that's something really, that's, I think that's going to be hard though for people that played a lot of Star Wars Battlefront 1. You know, it's just Battlefront 1. That's going to be really difficult for people to kind of switch over and not, you know, and not really think about just running and gunning everything and just um, paying money and DLC for better stuff. You know, it's really going to make you uh, actually think about the game, actually think about what you're going to do to play. And just to, to think before you go and shoot. Because, I mean, you know, first person shooters, of course, are about um, <laughs> shooting and being accurate. And, uh, you know, definitely a good amount of skill, but to me, the best first-person shooters incorporate both skill and strategy um, as far as good mechanics to work with. So that was something I super hated about Star Wars Battlefront 1, is that there really wasn't strategy, there really wasn't anything to it. People, you know, it was just a crappy game masked by the graphics and nostalgia of um, Star Wars. Which, it's not, it's not a good use of the series, not a good use of the franchise. It's honestly just a huge betrayal, in my opinion. And that's what it made it, that's what made me hate um, Star Wars Battlefront 1 probably the most. The dumbest thing was, is that I wasn't really aware of the 30 day return policy. So I stopped playing Battlefront 1 as soon as, like... Like, pretty much a week after it came out, I was done with it and was pretty sick of it. And was really, really disappointed. But I wasn't completely aware of the 30-day return policy. That may be my fault, but uh, I wish that was something that was, say, hey, if you want to return this game, like, as soon as I bought it. I mean, besides, EA should know. Like, EA should know that a lot of people are going to want to return their games. So they should really make the return policy obvious. So I stopped playing it, and then by the time I actually realized I could return it, um, it was far too late. So, unfortunately, I still have Battlefront 1. And, uh, which is really sad, which is really hard for me to still deal with these days. Because, um, yeah, it is really just tough. It's, it's tough for me to really be able to go around with my day and really, um, it's hard for me to, to, you know, talk to peers and stuff knowing that I still own Star Wars Battlefront 1. It's just tough. You know, it's hard when people find out, too. That I still have Star Wars Battlefront 1 from EA. Like, it's just tough. So, I not only do I think that, uh... They should be more, you know, upfront about their 30-day return policy, but they should, uh... You know, for anyone that owns Star Wars Battlefront 1... I really think that they should offer up um, free counseling and stuff like that because, you know, owning the game really does affect my personal life now. And, you know, it really, it really is affecting my, psych my psychology and just my mental health. Um, usually I can't sleep at night because um, usually I'm trying to sleep and then I'll remember that I have Star Wars Battlefront 1 and I'll just, and then like I just can't get to sleep. I can't sleep for hours. Um, and it really is a hard situation. Um, I've been considering uh, suing EA for this problem, you know, for all this. But I think what I really want to do is just be a bitter, uh, just a bigger person, and to learn from my experience, 
rather than to try and seek revenge. I think that's the I think that's the healthiest way to deal with it. And so I think that is really going to be my plan and whatnot. So that's I just invite for anyone else who's experiencing trauma from Star Wars Battlefront uh, One. You know, I invite you just to you know just embrace it. Talk to your friends, your family. You know, understand that it's like that people will accept. And believe it or not, there are probably a lot of other people that understand and that are maybe going through the same thing as you. You never know what you know what people are going through until until they you know they show that and they really let you in on that however I do also want to offer a little bit of counsel when it comes to this because I want to offer that although there is a lot of stress and anxiety and doubt depression a little bit of bipolarness that comes with a uh, you know the whole Star Wars Battlefront one thing uh, I do want to offer up that there is just there is hope there is hope that EA I think most of the reason why EA has done such a good job on Star Wars Battlefront 2 is because they realized what a huge mistake they made. And so... Uh, they're trying to just... I really think this is their way of making up for that. Because they really can't they really can't fix people's heads. You know, they really can't fix this the emotional and mental issues that they created for people. But they can... But what I think what they're really trying to do is offer up a bit of paradise, a bit of relax, a bit of reprieve from just the weight that that puts on people's minds. Um, and a way, I think it's also a way to move on, you know? A way to just move on from the past, to move on, you know, just move on to the future. To just, just the future of a new era of gaming, you know, to just leave the past behind him. I think, so I think that's probably the most important gift about Star Wars Battlefront 2 that EA is offering up to us is that you know they're just uh, they're just uh, really I think they're changing lives and I think that's one of the most I think that's the, probably the greatest thing a video game company can do is change lives and so you know what does this mean for the future you know will other will other companies really follow in EA's footsteps I don't know you know, you really can't, you can never really say for sure what's going to happen in the gaming industry and what effect it's going to have on the value of, of human life. But I personally, with my trauma, it's helping me personally move on and it's helping me be a better person, be a better gamer, um, be a better friend, be a better brother and son. You know, it's, it's really helping me move on. So the past few days, or you know, the past little bit that I've been playing the game, it's been, sorry, it's, this is a bit emotional, but it's been, it's been a huge help. Because Star Wars, Star Wars is a huge part of my life. And, you know, I just, I really care what people decide to do with it. And those days, they were really hard because that was a hard time. That was a really difficult time because it felt like someone, someone just had something that I loved, and they just, they just didn't care. They just didn't care. They didn't care at all what happened to it. They just wanted money, and that's, that's not what Star Wars is about. Star Wars about, Star Wars is about guns and lasers and federal diplomacy and, and Jar Jar Binks for Pete's sake. That's what it's all about. You know, not about money, not about DLC. Not about female stormtroopers. You know, it's about so much more. And so... Just the fact that now... Now that Star Wars is kind of coming back, it's an enormous, huge reprieve. reprieve and it's, it's really putting me on the path to... The path to recovery. <laughs> yeah, the path to recovery, <sighs> and that's that's the most moving thing. I talked a lot about EA and the changes they're doing and the really good stuff that they're doing, but We're losing reinforcements. I do. I just really want to say that they're changing my life, and I and I hope 
that for those of you really just give it a chance I know it's hard I know how hard it's gonna be to to go to even log back into origin again I know it's gonna be so difficult because just reliving the past reliving those dark and horrible memories it's gonna be so hard I know it personally but I, I can promise you that if you if you just move past that and if you just let yourself be vulnerable again with this with this new title about this, this new Star Wars Battlefront this is this is it will put you on the path recovery because that's what it's done for me it's really been something new in my life and dang it we're behind all right we gotta kill some crap we're gonna kill some fools that's freaking it like we're behind by 20 all right we could have played the Emperor the Emperor pass it up next time that fool comes up we're not gonna say no we're gonna say yes and we're gonna freaking we're gonna freaking kill everyone but no like I'm done you you're dead you're dead you're both dead all right this command post uh, -uh. it's ours you're not taking this again Bothan dead bot other okay team mate dead Wookie dead Bothan dead dead all right assault guys all right Wookie get out of here assault guy get out other assault guy you're done are oh, you trying to crouch around and be sneaky uh-uh that's not what I'm about Bothan you're out of here don't you try and sneak kill me someone's coming around the corner no you're out of here you don't have the chance you uh-uh I'm sorry rubble scum but you're just not in this fight this guy coming around. another smuggler another shotgunner uh-uh there's only one there's only one guy with a shotgun and it's me all right you're dead you're dead we are going to run away we're gonna put a debt pack down we're gonna pop some of this all right back into the game all right we are not gonna give these guys an inch that's right you're out of here it's time to get aggressive I've been emotionally damaged for too long and I'm gonna live it I'm gonna live this new life I'm gonna not let I'm not gonna let the horrors of Battlefront 1 take me down anymore this is me moving on this is me becoming a new and better man that's right for the Empire a new Empire a new Empire of Star Wars oh crap this is a lot of people um right um okay <laughs> that's fine hopefully we can place the Emperor no Emperor fine this command post trying to take this command post is you think that's funny do you think that's a joke get out of here Wookie no this is not a joke this is not a game this is not up for negotiation hello uh-uh what I tell you this is not up for debate we're taking your base we're taking the command post and we're killing all of your guys that's it end of story let's not put that for him let's kill that guy all right moving forward kill this guy yeah that's right Wookie kill your own dudes see if I care put that down boom you're dead all right other Wookie uh-uh you're out of here we're gonna reload real quick think you're gonna hit me with a rocket launcher uh-uh kill both those guys uh-uh this is one of the best things because Star Wars Battlefront 2 it gives you so many options just be aggressive and play the way you want to play no one can stand in your way all these guys are nothing they're worthless this game is nothing but good feelings and I like it it's it's been so long since I felt this good playing Star Wars Battlefront I mean that is until I go back and play Star Wars Battle the original Star Wars Battlefront 2 on on Steam but other than that this is where it is this is reality this is living this is what it's really about <laughs> we're styled down by 13 guys no You're right, defeat is not acceptable. We will not lose again. Not with this game. 
Star Wars Battlefront will rise. Star Wars Battlefront will be the new, the new, the new standard for gaming. If anybody ever falls short of this, then it should not even be sold. People, people should be able to file lawsuits against the company if games aren't as good as this. This masterpiece is visually, audially, or auditory, mechanically stunning work of art. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to even debate whether even the movies capture the Star Wars universe this well. You know, I mean, the prequels, they came pretty close, you know, and the, and the, the original trilogy, you know, they, they set the scene. They really, they really set up the universe, but this, this is really, this is really Star Wars. For me, this is the closest anybody's ever gotten. And I'm not sure anybody could ever get this close again. That is until EEA releases Star Wars Battlefront 3. That will be the day. That'll be a good day. But until that day, I'm going to fight for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Because I think it'd be a travesty if no one gave this chance. If no one gave this the effort, the option. Alright, let's go get a command post. Because I'm so happy that command posts are back. Now we're gonna make the best of it. We're gonna go. Not only that, but I've got a I've got a space I've got a space level freaking queued up for this. I mean, can you believe it? A space level. I know that the space levels in uh in Star Wars Battlefront One. I know it's hard to talk about, but they were terrible. They would just they just weren't important at all. Not even they just didn't have any place in the actual gameplay. But this is good. This is good. A command post is under imperial control. Yeah, it's under imperial control. Here we go. Not only that, vehicles make a lot more sense. They're not command super broken. They are good. They are wonderful. They make a lot of sense. Uh, this little cancer. Um, this guy's gonna have a hard time. You know, he's still he's still playing Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront One. You know, I'm playing Star Wars Battlefront Two. All right, we have another, we got another enemy out here. Who else wants this? All right, yeah, this guy. All right, we're right in, we're right in front of him. We're still missing the bombs, that's fine. We're gonna strafe around him. Oh, well, we're missing, we're missing bombs. They're a lot harder to hit. I do wanna say that the aiming is a little uh, counterintuitive. How it's, how it's pretty hard, actually. Um. I think they need to polish these mechanics up a little bit because you can you can see already just from me that this is not like this is pretty difficult and it really shouldn't be so it's definitely something I feel like EA needs to work on but they I mean they've got the option to do patches and things like that they've got the option to fix it they've got so much room to improve and they've just got so many places to go and now like as for me I'm gonna hunt the crap out of these two guys that are left on the map. They're gonna freaking die. And they're not even gonna know what hit him. We just gotta find them. Let's see if we can find him. Is there any way to be able to tell where they are? Because we are the last guy. We are the last guy on Paulus Massa. And we will continue to be the last guy on Paulus Massa. Now. Let's see if we can do this. Huh, but like even just walking around these maps, the ambiance, the music, it just really sets an amazing tone. A, an incredibly superior just environment. Plays the Emperor? No, we'll die. We're gonna say nope. Alright, guys. I'm pretty sure they're down here. I'm pretty sure this is where they're staking out. I'm pretty sure there's snipers that are like down here. So if we're not careful, um, I could very easily get killed. They're coming around. That's right. We're coming around. Where are they at? Where are they at? We got one behind us. All right. Yes. What's your gun? Easy. Now there's got to be one more. There's got to be one more person in here. This is always where they are. Hmm. It's not looking like this is where they are. All right. I guess. We're going to start uh, capturing these command posts then. That's not the way I like to win. 
But if it's gonna take a while for uh, us to find the rest of the people, then this is what we gotta do. We gotta win somehow. And this is the way we're gonna do it. All right. Let's see if they are... All right, they, we won. Awesome. And that's, that's amazing. Just absolutely incredible. Just, and that made me feel so happy. 96 kills? I mean, you know, that's pretty good. The, the, the KDA options for this is really good. Now, I picked Geonosis to really display, and we're gonna pick the, the CAS here, to really display the work that they put into the vehicles. Uh, right now, there's a spider droid, a spider walker. Um, really cool. Really amazing. You can just see the visuals and just the magnitude of it. You can really just tell the size and really get an understanding of what that vehicle really is. My favorite is the Hailfire. The, the Hailfire droid. Or the Hailfire tank. I don't really know what it's called. But this is probably one of my favorites. Just because uh, it's really powerful. You can mow down people from both close and afar. You can fire off lots of ro rockets that kind of home. You know, you can tell that we got a bunch of guys right there, so. One thing to mention is that the bots really don't use these vehicles to the best of their ability. Um, you know, they really just kind of abuse them. Slicer alert. No one's slicing into me. Let's be real. Uh, but even just playing the vehicles. Like, but what's cool is that they're still balanced. Like, they're not incredibly imbalanced like they were in Star Wars Battlefront 1. And that, like, pretty much anyone who is available, who is there when they spawn, can just can just pop into a vehicle, you know, and just call it a good day. You know, and be able to just have a good, fun, enjoyable, healthy experience online with a vehicle. Really, so it's really amazing. Um, but just the sound effects are heavy. They are, they're impactful. They really, they really show that there is, there is some oomph behind these. There's some oomph behind these things, you know. Like right there, just pow, 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 pow. Really feel powerful. Everything like that. Um, and so they're one of those things that if you miss, if you abuse them, you misuse them, can really put you in a bad situation. But if you use them correctly, can really put your team ahead. Because now we're at 130 guys, while they're at uh, nine. They're at like about 100 guys right now. Got to kill this Genosian, just so that he doesn't steal this. I'm gonna fix up my thing right now. One of the biggest, well, I've said this about a lot of things, but an incredibly amazing gameplay decision that they've made is that they put back in health bars. You know, none of that percentage crap, um, and none of that, like, healing over time. Like, if you need to heal, you go heal. Like, you don't, you don't mess around with just, like, sitting out for a few minutes and just magically getting your wounds back. You know, you got medical droids, you got, you know, the engineer classes, which are useful because they can fix vehicles and machines and things like that. You know, you've got so many options. You've got things that you can do. And so many things that just make sense. Slicer alert. Let's get out of here. But not only that, that guys, but you can kill people by just running over them. You know, you've seen me do it a few times. But, you know, that guy's dead. Which is really cool. Because it gives you still a lot of gameplay options. Because while most of the time vehicles have like infinite ammo and everything like that. Um, if you really just need to in a situation, you know, like right now, we can, we just need to charge and get this guy. Um, we missed, and we missed, but that's okay. We can just turn around. They're not too hard to pilot, and we can just turn around and we can take care of them really easily. Just like that. So now look at that. They're at 50, like less than 50 people, and we still haven't even hit 100. 100 reinforcements. Um, this guy should die. There we go. Play as Count Dooku. Um, I think I might as well. I've shown you vehicles. Now it's time to show, um, because look at this guy. This guy looks just like Willy Wonka's dad, which I think, I think he makes a good person to compare to, to Count Dooku. Um, because the, the actor who plays Count Dooku and the actor that plays, um, you know, Willy Wonka's dad, they're very similar, very alike, um, a really good choice. So as you can see those effects, the lightning effects, you've got things like your lightning, you have more abilities, but they kind of cost like stamina and things like that. Um, the heroes aren't super broken anymore, you know, 
everyone everyone has the option to be able to play these guys which is really cool we've so we got our one move the lightning really great for taking out groups really makes you feel like a sith that's one of my favorite parts is just the immersion the amazing immersion and now if i go in and i can show you guys the force choke really cool bit of the force right here is that we can come we can take one down but one of the drawbacks is that it does make us really vulnerable to other attacks like this. But if we like single somebody out and no one else is around, um, we can just take him out, no problem. Or if he's giving us trouble, we've got the lightsaber. And so we no longer kind of have these problems to where heroes are doing too much or not enough. We've got like this good balance to where if I'm not doing my job well enough by finding and killing people, and I take too much damage, people will take me out instead. Which which is really quite amazing. Really quite a bit of uh, really just really good balance. But there's just there's just so much. There's just so much more to this game than just this. I also do want to mention that something incredibly amazing also has happened with this game. Is that they've put a single player campaign back into the mix. Which is just, which is just incredible, because that was one of the biggest things that Star Wars Battlefront 1 was missing, was a single player campaign. And so, this, this is really something that's just so cool. There you go, get that out of there. Because that was one of the biggest complaints that people had, that there was no, there's really no single player options at all. And now there is, it's back. The game is back in full throttle. And it's amazing. The last on the list, as I'm pretty sure, is that now we just have the we just have the space battle to go over. Yep, here we go, the space battle, and this will be everything. The complete overview of Star Wars Battlefront 2. There's a lot we can do here. So first off, I'm actually going to pick the Droid Marine because now the space battles are important. They're good. <clears throat> I'm going to do this technique called sabotage. Which basically just, it's like this kind of new thing. It's taken, it's, pro, it's it's an idea that's taken straight from the old Star Wars Battlefront 2. Really cool. So first thing we're going to want to do, actually, is we're going to take out these Eclameter Assault Ships. So these are very reminiscent of the old uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, like Assault Ships and stuff. Taking these out gets your team's points and things like that. Um, really good mechanic. Like I said, opens up a lot of gameplay, especially for team play as well. It allows you to be able to split up your forces and to make the best of the, you know, of the time that you have. You can have some people go for these assault ships. You can have some people go inside for sabotage. You can have some people go outside and start. Woo! We see we barely missed a missile there. A lot happened right there, and I'll try and go back and explain. But pretty much someone, some one of these other ships, because like all those red dots are enemy ships. Really cool. We can go and dogfight them if we want. Like this guy right here. Boom. We just took that guy out. No problem. Like we we have a lot of we have just a lot of cool things we could do. A lot of things to make it like boom. Hit that guy. Hit that guy. That guy's dead. Another point. Like with just another kill for us. Right now I'm playing I'm playing a bomber class ship. So my, so you know, I am best at taking out these uh, these assault ships, which is good because they taking these out reduces the amount of like auto turret fire for the other ships and stuff, so that they can dogfight better. There's just a lot of, you know, so it's not just like whoever hits each other and it's just dogfights in these enormous, just not very necessary environments. It's just, it's just simple. It's just back to the simplicity, back to the the most important parts. Is that it's like this this kind of smaller area, um, better? Like this is really better, like this much better setup for a match. So as I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try and shoot some of these guys. But my job, my 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 uh, my plan is really not to uh, fight. This is what we're gonna do. So it's called sabotage. We're going to fly straight into the enemy hangar. And we're going to pop out of our ship, all right? And then we're going to shoot. We're just going to go in. We're going to run and gun. And we're going to shoot people before they even have a chance to get inside ships, all right? That's not even part of it, though. The main thing is that we are trying to take out 
parts of the inside. So now we can just shoot this. Boom. It's that easy. Um, if the enemy team was better about this, uh, they would have people guarding this place to stop people from sabotaging. But in this case, the, the bots don't really prepare for that. So this isn't going to be a super accurate example about what sabotaging is because in like the real kind of if you're going online which like I said you don't actually have to do. Um, in that sort of gameplay you have that option. So this guy he wasn't paying attention so we took him out. Survival of the fittest, the fastest and the most accurate. That's the whole that's the whole plan here. So let's just take out some more of these guys. It's fine. Because now we're going to switch to this side. Because we can. It's kind of like a cool little trick. Um, that I hope people start to kind of learn about. Really cool trick. That involves being able to get ammo and things through the wall. <sighs> Pretty awesome. Pretty, really useful trick. So now we got this all filled up. I wonder if we can get more. Nope, so that's it. So there are auto turrets here too. So it's kind of a difficult thing to try and dodge through. But if you can manage to do that. It's a really great reward. So then we can shoot through that and just take that out. No problem. So we're lucky, lacking a bit of health, but that's okay. Because we can just come in and get some more. Now, we're also going to need to... So we've taken out their life support. So you can see that they're on their map of their ship. That front black square or diamond. That's that's us. That's We took out their life support system. Which all gives us points to victory. So we're six points away from victory. We've actually just won right now. So my team was doing a lot for me while I was in here doing this. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of this just absolutely phenomenal game. Absolutely game-breaking and game-changing. It's just amazing. Now we're back on the Death Star where we kind of started. I, I, am, I implore you to come out and to buy this game and to get it for yourselves. As for me, I'm out of here. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Please leave it in the comments. Just leave in comments about how great this new game is. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.